Happy New Year, everyone. Hey, I'm Matt Fyror. I'm the game director on the Elder Scrolls Online at Cinemax Online Studios. It's another year, another time for another big announcement on Elder Scrolls Online. But first, 2019 was a great year for us. We were MMOG of the year again. We went to elsewhere. It was the first time we told a year-long story over the entire four updates of the year. It was really successful. We had lots of fun. But late last year, you'll know, we dropped some hints about where we're going next. We're really excited about what's coming next. We're really excited about what we're going to show you today. So thank you, all of you in the ESO community worldwide. ESO would not exist in its current form without the life that you bring to the game. So thanks. We are concentrating even more on the year-long story in a place that's very familiar to every Elder Scrolls player. We'll be talking about the year-long theme, the chapter, and how it all ties together. We're really excited about this, so welcome everyone to the Dark Heart of Skyrim. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Pete Hines and Rich Lambert. That's what that is. Wow. Yes, I am Uncle Pete, also known as Pete Hines from Bethesda, and with me in pants so you know it's a big day, creative director at Zinemax Online Studios, Rich Lambert. Rich, how are you? Good. <laughs> this is amazing. You know, the, the energy in this room is so hype. I get to be up here with you. 
We haven't done this since Morrowind. Since Morrowind, yep. And we haven't actually ever done this in front of a live studio audience before. And it's amazing to have so many people from the ESO community here uh, together. And <laughs> thank you guys for coming and, and uh, joining us. And of course, thanks everybody watching us uh, online around the world. We're streaming on Twitch and Facebook, YouTube, Mixer, you name it. We're, we're streaming on it. Um, and for those of you watching us on stream, we've got some stretch goals today. Um, as you may know, last year those stretch goals ended up with Rich getting a tattoo on his leg, uh, despite, <laughs> despite his fear of needles. Yeah. Uh, what are our goals this year? Um, if we hit 80,000 concurrent viewers, and that's across all of our different uh, platforms combined, uh, everybody is going to get a long-winged bet bat pet, say that five times fast, um, and if we really knock it out of the park um, and reach 150,000 concurrent viewers, uh, Rich and I are going to be doing the snow bear plunge. Uh, you know, and, and Pete, you know, I got a tattoo because of the community. My hair is still purple because of the community. We're getting We're wet. probably going to go for wet. a swim. Look, I've been practicing a couple of <laughs> fingers at a time and a glass of cold water. Like, I've already, I've already started training for this. It's happening. Um, so, we, Rich, we just took a look at the trailer. From the trailer and the name, Wild Guess, we're headed to Skyrim. We are. We're going to Skyrim. It is uh, a little different than the Skyrim that you uh, knew and kind of grew up with in Test 5. Um, but it's going to feel familiar. Yeah. Uh, Year-long adventure, kind of gothic. And I mean, a little vampires. dark. You got to see in the trailer there. It's dark. It's it's um, gothic. It is this um, very interesting adventure that takes you all throughout uh, familiar places and unfamiliar places. So it's going to feel familiar to Skyrim fans. I assume we have some of those here. <laughs> I mean, we've only released it like 47 times on 57 platforms at this point. If you haven't played it yet, I don't know what to tell you. We, we put it out as many times as possible. Um, but at the same time, it's going to feel very different in, in tone and feel, not only to Skyrim, but even to the ESO we know, uh, Skyrim as we know it in ESO, because there is some of Skyrim in ESO. There is. We, you know, at launch, we had the eastern portion of mm -hmm. Skyrim. So the Rift, East March, Bleak Rock Island. And so we decided to focus more on the Western side and, uh, you know, exploring what that was and some of the iconic places there. And, and Dark Heart. Dark Heart of Skyrim meaning? <laughs> well, we're going to actually take you to the Dark Heart of Skyrim. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh -huh. And this is, once again, this is going to be a whole year story. So it's, this is not just sort of, hey, come check out this DLC when we release it here and that's kind of the beginning and end of it. This is all year long. Yeah, like... Last year with Season of the Dragon, we're telling this year-long connected story um, that all four updates are very heavily tied together to tell this narrative. That was something that we got a lot of feedback on last year with Elsewhere. They liked it. They wanted the story to be even more integrated, and so we did that. Each of the, the DLCs that we do are all very tied directly to the storyline. And we do still have that big Elsewhere-like chapter this time around. We do. Um, so we're kicking off the year with quarter one in the dungeon DLC called Harrowstorm. Mm -hmm. uh, and the story of Darkheart kicks off there. There's a prologue quest and whatnot. And then it really kicks into gear in quarter two with the Greymore chapter. And Greymore chapter is going to be going up for pre-purchase like right now. So all of you want to jump on it and pre-purchase. And we'll be talking a little later in the stream about some of the goodies you get if you want to go ahead and pre-purchase Greymore. But that'll be available starting today. So we're, we're getting a new experience in a familiar location. We're expanding the area of Skyrim a little bit. But like, what's new in, in what I'm going to be able to go and do where I'm going to be able to explore? You mentioned, okay, well, you've been in the eastern part. We're going to head west. What, what does that mean? We're going west. Um, it's the site of uh, King Spargram. He uh, hasn't joined the Ebonheart Pact, so it's a very different story. It's a little bit more political. It is also um, this very um, almost supernatural dark storyline where there are weird... Uh, storms ravaging the countryside. There's werewolves and vampires and witches, 
and it's kind of up to you to figure out what's going on and how they all, or if they all, interconnect. How are the locations going to feel different biome-wise? Like we, we get one singular thing, you're breaking it up into a couple. How, we, how is we that split it, We're splitting it up like we do in all the other chapters. There's generally three biomes when we do that. Um, the northern portion of the zone is what you would expect, ice and snow. Um, that's incidentally where Solitude is, that mm -hmm. big iconic city. Blue I know, Palace, I, yep. I, I know you're and very familiar stone, with all that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you get to go have fun exploring that and seeing it in a different light, though. We're a thousand years, or almost a thousand years, before the events of Test 5. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, and then as you kind of progress through the zone, um, you move more towards uh, the lowlands. So rolling hills, a little bit of you know, that tundra, arctic, mm -hmm. um, boggy feel. Um, and I know, you know there's some uh, interesting locations there that you're pretty I mean, certainly with. both when it was in development and then afterwards just for fun. I, I spent a ton of time in Skyrim both for work as well as just for mm -hmm. having a good time and, and unwinding from work. So, <laughs> yeah, very familiar with Solitude and some of the other places that we're going to be talking about. You mentioned the like we're going to be visiting these places it's a thousand years in the past but you guys are not doing the same kind of one-to-one -one that you did for say the Morrowind chapter where it was much more about hey you know this part of the world from this game and we're going to kind of recreate it you're taking a different approach here in Dark Heart talk a little yeah, bit about that. we want it to feel familiar but we also want to go off and forge our own kind of thing and so we're telling different stories we're taking you to those familiar locations you know solitude and whatnot but we're also going other places and really diving deep into the dark heart of Skyrim. So uh, this is going to take place both above ground and, and below ground. Below we, you and I both know the first question fans love to ask when you talk about you know, going to a new place is, okay, how big is it? Is it as big as this? As big as, you know, down to the square inch they want to know size-wise. Especially is, this community. They... But this is, a little, this is a little different in terms of like if you just look at it on the map, it's actually not going to appear as big as some of the other ones, but that's a little misleading. It, it, you're right. So it's not one whole contiguous space. You know, there is the Overland space, which is Western Skyrim. And then there is this huge underground cavern down below Skyrim called Blackreach. Uh, and we're going to spend a lot. <laughs> You're going to get to spend a lot of time down there. Um, yeah, by the way, th this is not like, hey, it's really big and it's like this one thing over here. We're talking like. 30%, 40%? 40, roughly 40% of the playable landmass for the chapter is down in Blackreach. You're going to go to never-before-discovered locations in Blackreach. So, I mean, duh, vampires, werewolves, they don't like being out. So they, they've got a whole underground They do. You're going to get to find out happening. more about what that is and who's down there and why they're down there. And, but it's not just underground. We're going to some places that we are familiar with above ground. We mentioned Solitude. Morthal? Morthal is there. And it's that same kind of feel, you know, that creepy, foggy, boggy kind of area. Uh, there's a twist in it in our timeline. I won't spoil it, um, but it's going to feel um, similar but different. Interestingly, you know, the thing I remember about Morthal in Skyrim is that's the first place I came across vampires while playing the game because you go and there's the house burned down and the poor little girl and you've got to figure <laughs> out what happened to the house and there's a vampire lord who's trying to, trying to take over Morthal. So yep. cool that that's in there. Um, and that's going to be part of some story that you don't want to tell us. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it too much. Is it safe to say it's vampire like? Like ish? Yes. And <laughs> and and Blackreach. Now, Blackreach is an amazing area in the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim. It's also really friggin' hard to get to. Like, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to get to Blackreach. You have to swim all the way to basically where you think the game is gonna you know, cut off the map through ice flows and there's some random hermit in a cave who's like, oh, I have the magic fluzit that lets you get into Blackreach. <laughs> Seriously. When we were talking about yeah, yeah. like doing this and then I'm like, okay, well, what are some of the locations in Blackreach? Did you ever go there? And I was like, no. What the, where, where the hell do I get to Blackreach? And I'm wandering around like, oh, I have to have some stupid artifact to get into here. And so like once I got it and I got to go in there, like, oh my God, it's, it's amazing. It's this huge cavernous location. Uh, yeah, but that's also the beauty of what that team does, right? Where you can play the game for hundreds of hours and still not discover everything. This and that's, massive it's, it's underground. Just, yeah, it's, it's really amazing. And so we tried to do a lot of the same things in, in ESO. And, and so how do you take something like Blackreach that exists in Skyrim in some form, but what you're doing with it obviously is a much bigger 
scale. It's not just going to be to the size. Like you're, you're going we're, even we're bigger. We're going bigger. You know, there, the places that you know from test five are there, mm -hmm. but we're going deeper and exploring. There's actually multiple different types of biomes in Blackreach. Within Blackreach itself. Within Blackreach. Mm -hmm. nice. So uh, while you're wandering around, you're going to learn more about the creatures there. Uh, and see some very interesting things. There's Dwemer Ruins down there. Uh, there's vampires down there, like you said, as well. So lots of cool stuff. Uh, Dragon Bridge? Dragon Bridge is in there, so you nice. get to see that and explore that. And there's some sort of on the dungeon side, underground, places I remember like Shadow Green, which is a really interesting, unique cavern mm -hmm. in Skyrim, very different thematically. Uh, Labyrinthian, any chance we see? We have both those. So uh, Shadow Green is a delve where you get to go and explore that. It's a little bit different. We're a thousand years in the past, so some of the trees probably aren't as big as they would be. Uh, and then Labyrinthian is uh, a very large public dungeon. So you get to go around and explore that and just nice. see what all that is in there. But again, all of this is kind of you guys taking some, some locations that we know, but making it your own in yeah. terms of how big they are, what's going on there. You're not really tied, given the difference in time. To, yeah, we to get to do our own thing places. and tell our own stories, which is fun. Um, there's a lot of new ground to cover in Tamriel when you've got that, but there's more than geography. T talk to us about the story. Like, what, what is the story that you're telling across the year of Dark Heart of Skyrim? What, what is it about? What are players going to experience? It is uh, a very dark story. Um, it is, I guess the closest thing you could relate it to is Revenspire. For those that, you know, play that, you know, that, that feel, that really dark feel. <laughs> Um, it centers around vampires and werewolves and, and, and witches and people disappearing. Um, and it, it's very different than what it elsewhere was. You know, elsewhere was, you know, dragons, which were really cool, big, bulky creatures. But it was in the land of the Khajiit. And the Khajiit are, you know, these little bit off the wall, very happy-go-lucky people. And that's not what the Nords are. <laughs> At all. <laughs> Um, and, and you said this is similar to how we've done in the past, like what we did with Season of the Dragon. So, so functionally, Rich, is it breaking up into the same number of DLCs, the same types of DLCs? What, what can players Yeah, expect? so it's, it's the kind of typical four major updates over the course of the year. Uh, there's two dungeon DLCs, there's the chapter, and then there's also the story DLC that culminates the entire year. Okay, and two of those you mentioned, so Harrow Storm, and, and Graymore. And Graymore, and then two more coming. That we have two more coming that we will talk about at a later date, maybe E3. Yeah, all right. Now, one of the things you guys do a lot in when you do these chapters, when you do these DLCs, is you'll bring NPCs back that are, that are player favorites, either from you know, previous storylines in Elder Scrolls Online. And, and you, you and I both laughed, and we were over there waiting to come up, <laughs> because we got a big reaction. With to, Lyris. Yeah, is, a, is our... She is back. Oh, awesome. Lyris Titanborn is back for sure. She is. Yeah! Yeah! She is your guide and mentor throughout the entire year. Uh, Jennifer Hale. <laughs> Jennifer Hale is back as the voice of Lyris as well. So that's really exciting. And then, yeah, one of the things that the team really enjoys is. Uh, trying to bring back characters that people so, really resonate with. So who with. else could we expect besides Lyris? Uh, uh, everybody's favorite, hated uh, Dark Elf and Narcissus Dren is back. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we are uh, going to Skyrim. So, of course, Rigert the Brash is going to be back. Of course. Yeah, Rigert! You're going yeah, <laughs> to get to see, you know, and learn more about who he is and, and what he's all about. And then we are uh, also going to have some members of the Raven Watch return. Excellent. So we've got some places that we know from, from previous Elder Scrolls games, some characters that, that we're familiar with, and this really interesting story. It's a lot of mystery going on, but one thing we know for sure is that there's no mystery about how excited your team is oh, yeah. in doing this and the things that they're doing in Dark Heart of Skyrim. We spoke to some of the devs and asked them, asked them to share their thoughts on making Dark Heart of Skyrim and put together a little video. Let's take a look. My favorite part of playing through Skyrim has always been that layered storytelling, that turn a corner and something new is gonna happen and some new adventure is gonna kick off, right? And that influences us, us in the way that we build The Elder Scrolls Online, and it's certainly influenced us in the way that we've been building Dark Heart Skyrim. As a storyteller, it's always exciting to take existing locations, existing lore, 
expanding upon that and then merging it with new places that we're creating. We've seen East March before, we've seen the rift, now we're going to see what's going on on the western half of the continent. It's ruled by a guy named King Svargrim, who is not at all happy about the fact that he's got Yorin making friends with Dark Elves and Argonians. King Svargrim didn't join the Evanhart Pact. He's operating on his own, and he's not kind of happy with the rest of, of Skyrim. The Reachmen are a threat, but there's more threatening the people of western Skyrim now. It's a much more uh, darker, more gothic story. Every Nord knows the legend of Blackreach. They grow up hearing stories around the campfire. Nobody believes it's true. It's one of the best moments from Skyrim. You descend down into the ground and you emerge into this absolutely insane dwarven city that you had no idea was under your feet the whole time. And we are taking that idea and we're kind of expanding upon it. Like, it's not only under that one part of Skyrim. Maybe this cave extends throughout the entirety of Skyrim, and it's always underneath your feet wherever you go. We know the Dwemer have been down here. What else has been down here? What other adventures are down here? So deep underground, out of the sunlight, of course you're going to encounter vampires. Vampires in Elder Scrolls, they aren't all evil, which is kind of scary too. Where did this strain of vampirism come from? What makes these vampires scarier than other vampires we've encountered before? We really wanted this part of Skyrim to really be familiar to people. If you're in Morthal, you know that if you go south, you're going to get to Labyrinthian. We want people to step into solitude. We want people to remember those streets. I was going to flip a table if we didn't get to go to the Winking Skeever. Now, we didn't get to call it the Winking Skeever, but we still get to go there. And, and that, was, that was far enough for me. It feels like going home to a certain extent. Coming home and finding there's a new room waiting for you in the back of the house that's full of mystery, surprises, and a lot of danger. <laughs>
Like we're already in the second era, which is before any other Elder Scrolls game. But with Antiquities, we can reach even further back into the past and start getting scholarly insights and fragments of history from times even before that. Another cool thing about the antiquity system is, is that if you're looking for an opportunity to do something that doesn't involve you, like storming a cave and kicking an ogre in the face, this is a cool way to do that. You can go and, and travel the world and find cool stuff. They're going to be in base game zones, they're going to be in chapter zones, DLC zones, and zones that we release going forward. They're going to be everywhere. It's mostly about you and the open road and the antiquities you can find. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so antiquities are a big deal, and, and as we said at the end of that video, not just specific to this part that we're adding to it's it's going to incorporate the entire game. Game-wide. Past, present, and, 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 future, and future. But how does it work? What, how does antiquities work? So I guess the best way to summarize kind of the feel of the system uh, would be Indiana Jones in Tamriel. So you are this um, person that is, is scouring the countryside, you know, looking for interesting bits of lore, interesting relics. Uh, you know, as the guy said on the video, this is not your typical questing and killing. It's a completely different form of gameplay where there's these two new mini games, two new skill lines that are associated with those mini games that help you get better at antiqui antiquities. Um, you know, the first minigame, Scrying, um, is heavily influenced by a color or a shape match game. And that's what you do to zero in on the location of these, these objects. And then you have to physically go to that location in the world and do the excavation minigame, the digging minigame. And that is heavily influenced by like a minesweeper or battleship. And once you dig up the item, you get this cool thing. And the, the really fun part about the system is we try to appeal to all types of players. You know, there's kind of something in there for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when you dig up the object, obviously you want a trophy for your house. So there's tons of new furnishings. You can put them in your, in your, in your house. Uh, <laughs> there are uh, all kinds of new cool cosmetics for your character. You know, there's all, all types of stuff in there. There's emotes. Um, there's a brand new mount. And the really astute person uh, watching that video might have seen it in that video there. Um, I think we might show it a little bit later. Uh, and then there's a brand new type of gear uh, that you can get called Mythic Items. And there's even PvP stuff. There's there is. There's actually a, a siege weapon that you can get. Nice. I mean, first of all, I think you had a solid Indiana Jones. Like that. <laughs> it's Sold. pretty cool. D done. Uh, mythic Items. What are they? How do they work? These are uh, new, unique items. They only come at um, CP160 gold level gear, so they're high quality items. They're different in that you can only wear one of them at a time, mm -hmm. and they have unique properties to them. So a couple of examples, uh, there is a piece of jewelry that you can get that when you equip it, it increases your movement speed in combat. Um, when you're outside of combat, it actually doubles that movement speed. So it's this new interesting way to kind of play the game and, and equip your character. Uh, there's also a heavy chest that you can put on that when you block, it actually restores magicka. So, and, but you can only have one of these You can only equip one of them at a time. And again, the whole idea is, for antiquities, is regardless of your play style, A, it's not a, like, go kill a bunch of stuff, or it's not a quest thing. This is at your own pace, when you want, and there's gonna be stuff for every type of, of every, player. Every type of player, and the beauty is, is really, you know, this is a, a system that you can do at your own pace. And so those players that might not necessarily have access to guilds or you know, a ton of friends that can go into the trials and do the, the high-end stuff, they get some really cool new gear and new gizmos they can do that they can play on with. Their own. Yeah. yeah. So we said two things, one of which is antiquities. The other is you're revamping the vampire skill line. Dark Heart of Skyrim. Revamping vampires. Uh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so, can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, this year is you know, heavily influenced by, by vampires, and so we thought it would be a really good opportunity to go back and look at the skill line and look at the experience. And the team looked at everything from the abilities to the passives. There's a brand new ultimate ability that I won't spoil uh, with it. Uh, and it's this whole new package, so it's this fully realized skill line and experience. So you can um, like necromancy, um, if you do overt vampire actions in the world, the justice system will report you. 
um, guards, you'll get bounties. And then the team even looked at just the feeding mechanism in and of itself. And we, we kind of took a page from the Dark Brotherhood and Blade of Woe, where now feeding has these really cool new paired animations where you feel like you're actually feeding. And I actually saw a, a prototype animation just before this where you, know, you kind of sneak up behind somebody and you jump on their back and gnaw on their neck and there's viscera and gore and kind of all this. Like, it is a vampire experience, which is really cool. So, yeah! I am curious, when, when you're working with something like a, a vampire skill line, is, is sucking like a stated goal that you want to get to or is it a thing that you avoid? Come on, it's a vampire thing. I'll get one vampire joke during the vampire stream. All right, that's yes. my last one. I will do that? it again. Yes. Uh, all right, so now, you know me. I have a pet peeve about this, which is I can't stand when a game company or a publisher says there's never been a better time to play game X. Everybody mm -hmm. always says that. But there's a lot of people who maybe either haven't played Elder Scrolls Online for a while or have never played it. And so the question is, without saying that, how do you explain to somebody, all right, I'm thinking about getting into this game, but you've got... Dark Heart of Skyrim and Greymoor, we've got Morrowind, we've got all of this content. Like, how do I know where I'm supposed to jump into this and, and start? So that's the beauty of Elder Scrolls Online is it's really up to you. You know, we don't have arbitrary level gates that prevent you from playing with your friends or going and exploring. You can, from level one, go to the brand new content and play it and experience it and have a good time. You can play ESO any way you want. You know, if you want to be a mage in heavy armor and a shield, you can do that. If you want to throw fireballs, you know, you can do that as well. It's, it's, it's up to you. And we don't dictate to you how to play. If you want to play Elder Scrolls Online as a single player, you can do that. And then when you're ready, you can play with your friends. So Dark, so Dark Heart of Skyrim is something that, I mean, like these folks, you play a ton of the game, maxed out, there's still lots of content there's for you. tons of things. But if you're new and want to jump in and have this be the first thing, it's not like, well, you got to go do this other stuff. You can no. start off in Greymoor, day jump one, in new Jump in from character. level one and just start playing. Cool. Now, I know that these folks, in particular, and some of our more hardcore players, we're not super happy with us about something with Elsewhere, which is we decided not to do a collector's edition uh -huh. for Elsewhere. And they were like, dude, what the hell? What, where's our collector's edition? We love the collector's edition. So we heard you, um, and we're doing one this time around. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> So we are doing a physical collector's edition. Um, it comes with a really sweet statue, um, Hell yeah. some collector's coins, a map. Every Elder Scrolls game has to ship with a map. I think that's a law. Um, a, ton of, a ton of digital goodies, a whole bunch of stuff, including an emote pack that, inc I mean, because we haven't driven Arrow to the Knee completely into the ground yet. <laughs> We had to have an arrow to the knee emote. Um, and it comes with a free month of Elder Scrolls Online Plus, which you can either use for yourself, or if you've got a friend, if you're already an ESO Plus subscriber, you can gift it to anybody uh, that you want. So, yay. <laughs> and as always, I mentioned before, uh, pre-purchase available for Graymore. There's all kinds of digital goodies available if you want to pre-purchase Graymore. It includes an all-new mount, the Holdbreaker Warhorse, and if you pre-purchase Graymore, you can start using the mount immediately. So you don't have to wait until Graymore comes out. You'll get the mount right away and can start riding around. Uh, go to the website for all the details and info on everything in the CE and in the pre-purchase uh, goodies. So, okay. I said I wanted to start with Greymore, but now we're gonna go back to the first one that's okay. coming out. So the, the first one is new DLC, it comes out this quarter. Uh, Harrowstorm, it's gonna be on PTS next week. Next, yeah! next week it'll be on PTS. All right, so what can you tell us about Harrowstorm? So Harrowstorm is you know, a two dungeon DLC. Uh, it contains uh, the prologue, which really kicks the story off for, for the entire year. And uh, the, the dungeons themselves, one is called Ice Reach, it takes you to the Sea of Ghosts, uh, and you learn more about these really weird storms. You know, I touched on those a little bit in the Ice Reach Coven. And the other dungeon is called Unhallow Grave, and that is um, an ancient burial site that uh, was 
under protection for some reason, was heavily guarded and has since kind of been forgotten about. And there's a group or somebody in there digging up whatever was entombed in there. And you, and you, you said before that. that you're really trying to do more of the story earlier on and not just waiting for, okay, here's this big chapter in quarter yeah. two. So Hera Storm's gonna include much more story in terms of what's going on. What you find out in the dungeon lays a very strong foundation for the entire year. Now, the Harrowstorm update is not just about that DLC. You're also doing a bunch of updates to the game itself yeah. as part of that release later, later this quarter. W what is that going to include? So back in July, I think it was, we posted a performance roadmap update uh, up on ElderScrollsOnline.com. And we've been updating it over the course every month. We've been updating, here's the progress, here's where we're, where we're going with this. Um, you saw a little bit of that at the end of the year with some of the memory, memory improvements that we did. But this year, the very first really big one is the patching overhaul. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna cause everybody, or require everybody to re-download the entire game. But once you do, the game's gonna be significantly smaller on disk, almost 30 gigabytes smaller, which is massive. Uh, and, and it's gonna result in the game running faster, loading faster, uh, frame rate's gonna be a little bit better. And patches going forward are gonna be smaller. So shorter downtimes, smaller yep. patches. Yep improved stability, all of that all stuff of is things. coming starting with, and this isn't the only one, but this is the start of. This is the start of the entire year. Like that's the other big part of this year long story uh, is uh, the performance aspect of it. All right, so Hera Storm coming out Q1. We put together a video to talk a little bit more about, about what you can expect. Take a look. This year long adventure into the dark heart of Skyrim starts with Hera Storm, which focuses on two dungeons, Ice Reach and Unhallowed Grave. Discovering the mysteries in these two dungeons are a gateway to the larger Dark Heart of Skyrim. Ice Reach is this island in the middle of the Sea of Ghosts, and there's this mysterious storm swirling about. So an expedition was sent there to figure out what's going on, and they haven't returned. Once the player arrives on the island in search of the missing expeditionary force, they come across Lyr's Titanborn, and they team up with her in order to discover what the witches are doing on the island and put a stop to this mysterious storm. As you travel across the island, you're going to come across multiple witches, each with their own type of magic. Some are going to use fire. Some are going to use electricity. And they also have other minions and creatures that they're going to bring to fights. Unhallowed Grave is this mass burial of bones that has been underground and sealed away for thousands of years by the Pyre Watch. And it's been so long that what exactly is down here is actually unknown to them. And they appointed people to watch over it. They had one job to do, and they couldn't do that right because somebody broke in. Not only is the player going to have to deal with the Nordic mercenaries, but the defenders that the ancient Pyre Watch left here to guard the tomb. And you are discovering what was left down here and what the Nordic mercenaries are looking for. <laughs> what is that? That's a boss. He, he, he wanted to know what is that, Rish? What, are you going to tell us what that is? You'll find out next week. Oh, wow. oh, nice. So we've got Hero Storm coming uh, mid March, but it's going to be on PTS next week. We've got Greymore coming out in Q2. Anything else you want to tell us about what's coming in 2020, maybe second half of the year? Yeah, I mean, we've only touched on quarter one and quarter two. Um, we're going to talk more about quarter three and quarter four you know, at E3, but one is going to be a dungeon DLC and the other one is going to be that story DLC. Okay, but we got, I mean, we got the, all these people here. Like, yeah. like what, if, what if we just promised, just in this room, what if you just tell us? Just in this room. Just us. We won't tell anybody else. Just like a little tease, like, like something. We're under NDA. All right. <laughs> I like that. That's good. So as long as it just stays in this room. Just in this room. Just in this room what, between us. What happens us. in Vegas stays in Vegas. You know. I like that. Okay. I like that. Um, okay. How about this? If you are at all interested or familiar with uh, lore about the Reach, mm. you might be really excited about the coming uh, fourth quarter. 
Okay, so so maybe the, you're, so you're telling me there's a chance we're going. There's a chance. Okay, we'll find out more at E3. Yeah. Okay, but for now we got Harris Storm. We're looking forward to Gray Moore. Um, any last words? Any last thoughts you want to share with folks? Yeah, I mean, I think this year is poised to be remarkable for ESO. You know, we've got all this really cool new content, these new systems coming in. Um, the community is continuing to grow and expand. Um, we uh, have actually seen, you know, our, our Russia community grow significantly over, over the past um, year or two. So we're actually going to localize ESO in Russian. So text only. Um, there's a lot of friggin' text in there. <laughs> that is no small undertaking. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's going to be a, a fully supported official localized Russian SKU. That's awesome. Yeah. They, and I mean, entirely due to the community in Russia. I mean, yeah. those folks that support the game have been so awesome. And one other thing I wanted to ask you, Stadia. We, 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 we were part of the Stadia stuff, and yeah. we got a few questions like, hey, what, what's up with that? We, we get that a lot, yeah. And we haven't forgotten about it. We're still hard at work on that. Uh, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about that at E3. Awesome. OK. Um, I think that's about it. Rich, thank you so much for thank all you. the details. This was a blast. Info. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you guys so much for joining us in person and for everybody who joined us on the stream. We are going to go right to the uh, post show, but before we do, let's take one more look at the uh, trailer for Dark Heart of Skyrim. Hell yeah!